Coming up on this edition of Unscripted Faith, we have critically acclaimed singer-songwriter Jason Gray with us. He has an incredible story and a new project that just came out that will not just inspire you, but your young ones at home too. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not all. We have a brand new Ask Amy segment, and she has some advice for anyone who's struggling to find a clear vision for their life. Find out what she has to say about living the life God intends for you. All that and more coming up right now on Unscripted Faith. Thank you. We are so happy you joined us. Pastor Jay, I think the story we're going to hear today is really going to inspire us. You know, I really believe so. It's going to be moving. It's going to yes. be inspirational. It's going to minister to all ages, which is really cool. So if yes. you've got kids or anyone that's around you, Bring them in, because I think yeah. it's going to be uplifting to them. I think so, too. You know, God has a special calling for each and every one of his followers, and our next guest is no exception. Singer-songwriter Jason Gray was blessed with an incredible music talent. And not only that, but his journey hasn't been that easy. Jason, we're so glad to have you with us on Unscripted Faith. Thanks for having me. So great to be here with you guys. You are a phenomenal musician, talented singer, songwriter, and we are blessed to have you here. But, you know, when people see that and they see your credentials, they think, oh, man, he must have lived on easy street. But you actually came to know Jesus from a moment in the car, knowing the kind of the talent that was given to you. You're listening to music, you're in the car, waiting for your grandpa to come out of the store, and the Lord invades your life in a really unique way. Take us to that moment. Yeah, well, um, uh, I, uh, and I should let everyone know, I do have a speech handicap, um, so I just want them to know that so that they, you know, they don't, uh, worry about me or imagine that you guys are making me nervous. You, you guys are great. Uh, but my, my, uh, my speech handicap came from, um, it was, it was tr tr triggered. Um, my, 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 my parents went through a very ugly divorce. And, um, so I grew up on the road with my parents bar band. I didn't grow up in the church at all. Uh, I grew up around a lot of music and, uh, so I suppose it's no surprise that the first time that I heard God speak to me was through um, the music that I loved. The first music I cared about as a little boy was the music of Simon and Garfunkel. That was what I loved. And uh, in the midst of my parents' divorce, we were living at my grandparents' house. Um, and there was a lot of chaos, a lot of volatility there. My, my grandpa was a good man, um, but he also uh, was an alcoholic. And so that was going on in the background, you know. One day I was out doing errands with him, and it was January in Minnesota, so he left the car on when he went into the liquor store. And uh, there I am in the car, and over the radio I begin to hear uh, a song by my favorite group, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. And uh, if you haven't heard the song, the the... the the lyric goes, when you're weary, feeling small, and tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down for you. And I remember hearing the song and having an overwhelming sense of a benevolent presence in the car with me, like that was like, um, like I was held within it, you know. And, uh, and I heard it say, psst, hey. Uh, the words of this song that you care about, this is my heart toward you. And I believed it. I didn't have the language to say, oh, I think that God spoke to me that, you know, that I would come much later. Like I was around f f f five years old at the time. But, uh, but that was the first time I remember God speaking to me. And I've always experienced music as one of the ways that God speaks and all and I all, I always wanted to be a part of that you know so I I I believe that's where I've I first uh discovered 
a passion for wanting to make music. Wow, you know, that's awesome. Let me get in on this here. Uh, you mentioned about having a speech impediment and uh, you know, you, you shared a little bit of your story about how, you know, Moses, you know, it's kind of like he's getting ready to go in and talk to Pharaoh and you said, God, I'm gonna answer your call and I know that when I get up there to speak that you're gonna loose my tongue and everything's gonna be, go, it's yeah. gonna go well. But you said it didn't happen, but you still have the courage. You minister all the time to people, adults, as well as young children from ages uh, uh, grade three to 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you do that each and every day? Because a lot of people, they have one mm -hmm. bad experience. They're not ever yeah. getting back into that pulpit. Sure. You have to yeah. face that each and every day. Well, first of all, we admire your courage, which I think is outstanding. Yes. But what gives you the courage and the strength and the resilience to keep going forward, even though God hasn't loosed your tongue, but you keep sharing his message? Yeah. Well, I remember early on as I began to have a, a sense of God's c c calling on my life, I used to argue with him about it, you know, like Moses. Sure. You can't make me your spokesperson and say, make it so I can speak. And I don't know if you've had this experience or not, but when you t t t tell God that he can't do something, it's kind of like a dare that he can't resist, right? You know, so uh, here I am. I do what I do because I lost a dare with the Almighty, you know. A lot of my life uh, looks like that, actually. Um, but I, I, uh, I remember I had the idea of, uh, okay, I see how this is going to work. I, I have a speech handicap. You're calling me to speak for you. That means when I step out in faith, you're going to make it go away. Okay, of course. Of course, this is how it's supposed to work. I can see it now. This will be my testimony that when you step out in, in faith, God will meet you there and everything's going to be all right. Of course, it's perfect. And, and that began a journey of me stepping up to the mic, hoping and believing that my faith would release God's healing in my life. And as that repeatedly wasn't happening, you know, like I started to get, well, I was discouraged that maybe sure. uh, I wasn't like holy enough or I wasn't believing hard enough. And I was on this shame, try harder treadmill of trying to get God to move the way that I, I believe he was supposed to move. And that was wearing me out. It was making me resentful, angry with God. And I remember... Uh, I had this, uh, I was doing a c c concert at a local c c c c coffee shop and it was one more opportunity to try and like believe hard enough to get God to release this healing that I increasingly was feeling like he was holding out in front of me, just out of my reach. And I stepped at the mic, stepped up to the mic and I stuttered horribly. I was embarrassed. I just wanted to go home and hide afterwards. I'm packing up my gear and I, I turn around and there's a line of people who want to talk with me. And one by one, I begin to hear um, different versions of the same story. Each of them saying, thank you for doing what you did because it reminded me that I'm not, uh, um, you know, that, that my life isn't determined by my imperfections either. Wow. One by one, that's what I began to hear. Wow. And I, and I remember on the drive home, I began to realize uh, the thing that spoke to people wasn't the words I spoke. It wasn't the songs I sang. It was simply the fact that I was broken and I got up there and I did it anyway. And I began to realize, oh, maybe God doesn't want to heal me of my speech handicap, but maybe he wants to bring healing to others through my speech handicap wow. because Wait, there is hey, Jason wow. Jason yeah. say, say that again That's that is so <laughs> good say that again well I began to be aware that uh, I believe that that God didn't want to heal me of my speech handicap but wanted to bring healing to others through wow. it because there is a wow. grace that is released through us right mm -hmm. when we live transparently about the things that we struggle with you know like as long as I'm just working out of my strength, I'm just kind of showing off my strength, right? But if I'm willing to allow myself to be weak and broken before people, that's revealing the grace of God, you know? And uh, allowing people to see how his, uh, his power works um, in our lives in real time. And so um, that just began... I, what I hope is that my songs I write, the concerts I do, the books I write, you know, 
that uh, in the mix of all of that is this willingness to be uh, all of who I am, the strengths, the weaknesses, the imperfection, and the brokenness, and to be all of that authentically and transparently, and trust that that that's what God is going to speak through, you know. Wow. And I mean, what I love is that, like you said, your healing really is bringing healing to others. And, and I can't imagine this way in the space the Lord has just um, put such a kiss on this very difficult challenge, this thorn, you know, so to speak, in your side. It's a good word for it. You know, it's beautiful. But you are you just had a concert last night. You're calling us from a camp wow. where you're ministering yeah. for six weeks to children. Like you are poured out wine on the Lord behalf. And so tell us a little bit about what you're sharing with these kids that has to do with sparrows. Oh, well, you know, I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a deep theology guy and, and psychology and, and, and like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about what makes humans tick and I can go really deep into that, you know, um, and, uh, but 28 years ago, I started, uh, working, working at a camp in, in, in the summertime. And, uh, so I, I, I get to be out here every, uh, s s summer and there has been s something very, uh, healthy for me mm -hmm. in that, that, uh, I, I can do all this theological reflection, but to have to uh, boil all that down to hope that I can bring to a third grader mm. every year has been very healthy for me. You know, uh, especially since j j j Jesus upholds, ch 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 mm -hmm. upholds ch 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 childlikeness as the highest wisdom, right? And um, so this this camp has been a, a very healthy place for me to return to, and I think has helped keep me connected to a sense of childlikeness that I I hope has come out in the book that I just wrote. Um, so it's kind of special that um, I played a concert last night in a town that's close to the camp and so I asked him hey is there if I stay at the camp you know um instead of a hotel so that's where I am this morning so wow. it's appropriate that I'm here yeah. uh, as I'm speaking with you about my children's book amen amen so awesome we love that you are taking everything that the Lord has given you and you are pouring it back out for us to all glean from and now for our children to glean from. You have such a powerful testimony, Jason, and we are excited. I'm excited to share the book with my kids. It's going to be awesome. Oh. For yeah. sure. For sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You got it. Now you don't want to miss. Stay tuned because we're going to head over to Amy and get some wisdom from her. Stay with us. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that life is a journey and not a destination. On this journey of life, have you ever experienced fog or haze or storms or darkness? You know, the same thing is true in life. The question today is, I'm going through a season of blah. Have you ever been there? How can I get a crystal clear vision for my life. Here's a couple of thoughts for you. You've got to envision the dream in your life. You've got to write it down. You've got to write the vision down. Make it plain. Did you know only 1% will write their goals and visions down? And if you can see it, you can have it. You've got to speak the dream. You've got to let the dream come alive in your heart. You've got to take action for your dreams. If you have vague goals, you're going to have vague results. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. 
And then I would say you've got to give a memorable offering. You've got to sow a seed. If you have a dream, sow a seed. And then you've got to praise, praise the dream. The highest expression of faith is praise before you see it. So here's a couple of scriptures for you. Proverbs 13, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. We want life on your journey. We want a crystal clear vision and mission. Ephesians 3.20 says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask, think or imagine. Do you know, it doesn't matter what you can dream up or pray for, God's plans for you exceed even that. Man, this is so good. Fierce Peter 4.10, this is what I want you to get today. Every single one of you, without exception, has received a grace-given gift. Embrace what God has placed inside you. Take ownership of it and do your best to develop and use that gift to meet the needs of one another. God has entrusted a great deal to you by placing such a dazzling gift in your life. And he is depending on you to be faithful with this important responsibility. Wow. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always had. If you can see it, you can have it. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. What do you want? If you want crystal clear vision, what do you want? What do you have? What do you have in your hands? What do you have in your house? What will you do to achieve it? And why will you do it? Listen, you've got to envision God's best for your life so that you can walk in crystal clear vision. I'm Ask Amy, and I'll see you next week. You know, every one of us have been given a grace. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. We've been given a grace, you know, because really, that gracing, you kind of go back to what Jason was talking about. Yes. You know, uh, when you have a grace to do something, you have the ability to do it, even if nobody pays you. Come on. Because uh, to be honest with you, I didn't want to go preach. That yeah. is the last thing I want to do is be a preacher. It was not there, but there was a grace on my life, which means yes. God will give you the desires of your heart. I don't believe that means, well, if I desire it, God will give it to me. I believe he gives you. Desires. what your heart should desire. So whatever your heart desires, as you begin to write it up and begin to do it, God's gonna begin to bless you. And then that gracing is his empowerment to be able to do that. Yeah, and I like that Amy shared that scripture because I think that it tells us there is a little responsibility on us. You know? doubt. I think sometimes doubt. we're like, yeah. oh my goodness, I wanna do this and God's just gonna make it happen. But you know, even thinking back to Jason's story, you yeah. know, he had a fear and a trepidation but he recognized there is a gift that God's given yeah. me. I've been exposed to the music industry my entire life and, and this is in me, so I've got to do something with it. And, and I think writing it down, you know, there was a Harvard study done not too long ago, Jay, well, it's probably been a decade or so now, but said that 1%, they followed students around and saw 1% of those students who wrote down their vision those were the only ones whose dreams or desires were actually fulfilled. The others who did not write it down, it never happened. You know, it's amazing because uh, my wife does that. She has an wow. actual journal that writes down everything. Uh, there, there's something to that. There is. That Habakkuk, is it? Is yes. Habakkuk 2-4, yeah. Habakkuk. write the yes. vision, make it yes. plain. Because uh, I mean, she, whatever she writes down, we get. So yes. I'm like, baby, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write that down, write that down. Cause, and she'll check every single one out. We see healings in our church. Come we on. sell stuff from our pregnancy center. She even has Come one on. for the pregnancy center. She writes down all the things and she goes back and says, everything I wrote down and we pray about, God brings to fruition. So people need to ink it, don't yes. think it. Come on, oh, I like that, ink it, Come don't on. think it. Pastor <laughs> Jake with the pithy words. Ink Listen, it, uh, and, and you know, there's something to that because you think God spoke the world into existence and his son is the word incarnate. So if you dare to be creative with the co-creator, be a co-creator with the creative one and declare it with your mouth and write it with that pen, with those words, watch what the Lord will do. Ink it. Don't think it. Don't think it. <laughs>
<laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I literally love that. Listen, don't go anywhere because there's still plenty more to come up on Unscripted Faith as Jay and myself answer some fun get to know you questions. And y'all know we like to have fun here. You're going to get to learn a little bit about us. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in His counsel, and hear His wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness His Word manifest in your life and return to His promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome to Dashing Dish. Today, protein is all the craze. And my friend Caroline from Fit For His Glory is joining us in today's show, and she's gonna be making some of my favorite protein treats and snacks. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like... You're going to find freedom. You're going to find healing. You're going to find a clear conscience. You're going to find ways that you're hearing God in the, in the ways you've never heard Him before. You hang in there. He's a God who never, ever lets us go, ever. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. Well, I have to say this is probably one of my favorite parts of unscripted faith because we've got some unscripted get to know you fishbowl <laughs> questions right here. So we're going to dig in on this and just see what comes out of this. And I'm going to ask Angela a question. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Would you rather hear good news or bad news first and why? Bad news because I, I can then leave on a high note if the good news is second. What about you? It don't matter to me because both of them are about perspective. Who? Go and ahead, I believe preacher. I, I, be, I believe, I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, people say, do you want good news or bad? It don't matter because I'm going to think good about both. Well, so even if it's bad news, I got to find the good out of it. That's true. And so uh, that's how I kind of look at everything. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad, just how I see it. I like it. Romans 8 and 28, it's all going to work together for the good. Come on. Okay, here we go. If you weren't in your current career, what could you see yourself doing? I'm in the medical field. Listen, what, what I want to go into the medical, medical field. Oh, man, I wanted to be an anesthesiologist, okay. uh, which is basically the people that help put you under. Yes. Uh, I like all that stuff. <laughs> uh, I love it. Matter of fact, my wife and I always have a running joke about because, like, she'll say, what's wrong with my body? What's going on with this? Or what's wrong with my body? And I'll start diagnosing stuff because I did do nursing school for a little while oh, wow. when I was 15. Wow. So I chose not to continue it because I wanted to pursue sports. Okay. So I should have finished it because I love the medical field. I love anatomy and physiology. Oh. I love pharma, uh, pharmacology, which is the study of all. Oh, don't even get me going on that. That's, that's my awesome. soapbox. So if I wouldn't be healing souls, I'm still <laughs> healing bodies in the name of Jesus. Well, that's it. But you don't I, need to I, take it under. It. Well, maybe under the power of the Lord. That's it. That's it. Now God said, you ain't got to go through school. Just lay hands and you're going to be all right. <laughs> I was on the pre-med track as well, but I am thankful I didn't go down that path because I always say doing real estate and everything else, if there's a problem that comes up, I say, listen, you ain't got to fret. Nobody's dead or dying. I couldn't handle that pressure, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Right. Draw. Did you tell you, you told yours? Um, what you'd be know. doing if you weren't doing your profession? I don't know what I'd be doing, truthfully. I'm Probably right in the center of it. Because yeah. you do everything now. So, <laughs> all right, well, let me give you another question here. What's a recent book or movie that made a big impression on you? Most recent movie, and I loved it, is the best Christmas pageant ever. Just came out. Um, Dallas Jenkins, the chosen creator. Is that oh, Walmart? it's so good. You've got to go see is that it. Walmart? Um, or something like that? No, it's, that it, no, okay. it's the um, like Angel Guild. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is so, you've got to take your boys to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys will love that movie. Speaking How about of you? Angel, uh, Bonhoeffer's coming out. 
uh, about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Okay. Oh my goodness, can't wait. Come I think on. that's coming out. I already got my tickets uh, the 21st. That oh, is going to be of out this of this okay, month about him. Oh my goodness, yes. I can't wait to go see that. That's Powerful a date healing. night, y'all. Go get your lady, get your man some, <laughs> and go on in there and do that. Uh, but that's a movie that really made a big impression on me recently. There's a movie called Conclave. Okay. It's about uh, uh, the the uh, Vatican okay. and how the Pope dies and how they go about selecting the new Pope oh. and the, the conspiracies and stuff that go behind it, outstanding. I won't even wow. tell you how it ends, but I mean, it'll blow your mind. Okay, really, I'm gonna have really to find good. that one. Yeah, okay, okay, here comes one for you. Would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? Ooh. Fast forward. I want to know where I'm going. You're only throwing something <laughs> extra in that song. Yeah, I know. Bit. I was like, I don't want to rewind. No, I, I don't want to go back. Nah, I don't want to pause. Never. Uh, I mean, if I had to go back, it would be more like I'd rather do replay, you okay, know, because yes. I can go back and learn some things. But yes. I, I want to know what's coming. I'm one of those guys. I'm okay. never, my biggest weakness is I don't live for the moment. Yeah. I'm always on to the next thing. And that's, I, I got to take time to smell the roses. So maybe pause would be better for yeah, me. Yeah, I was I just like going to say, because you might yeah. fast forward yourself to glory. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would too. I, I want to know what's happening when we uh, step out there. What, what are we having at the Mayor's Supper of the Lamb, by the way? <laughs> what's on the menu? I want to know that. What about you? Um, I would rewind, and just so that I could get more time when my babies are babies. Wow. I just love that, those, those sweet, still away your breath moments. You feel like you're capturing a glimpse of God. Yeah, I you would see, do that. See, I have to, I have to insert right there. Now, see, <laughs> it, now I, I love my boys. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it to sound this anyway. For those that are listening, I don't want it to sound any bad way. But I did not enjoy the early years, like oh, the really? the one month, two month, being up every night, <laughs> walking around like Michael Jackson on Thriller, like one of our uh, cameramen right now is at home doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't enjoy any of that, but I love the relationship part uh, with my sons now. Yes. I love taking them out, uh, having lunch with them. I just took my son on our first annual father-son trip. So oh, every year, so taking my sons, just one of them, and then I'll take the other one, and we'll just go different places and just have a time together. So I took my, uh, my oldest son to Niagara Falls. Oh. And I uh, went there, and so we got all these pictures and stuff, and then we went and played video games and went to a, like a 10 o'clock movie and oh, all that type that. of stuff. So that's kind of like our thing. So I enjoy that, but no, 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 no. <laughs> no I do rewind. not want to change diapers and all that. <laughs> no rewind I'm done. for you. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, would you rather fulfill your biggest wish or resolve your biggest regret? Ooh, these wow. are good. Wow, now that one makes me think a little bit. Yes. Um, probably my, my biggest wish, you know. I yeah. Because, uh, I mean, I still got so many things in my head moving forward. Once again, I'm not usually a guy that looks back. Yeah. I heard Steve Harvey say something really good. He said, regret is the most useful emo or non-useful emotion you can ever spend your energy on. Well, and uh, there's nothing I can do about the past, that's but the truth. I can live uh, for tomorrow. So I think it'd probably be looking forward again. Yeah, so how about you? Same, biggest wish, yeah. biggest wish. Okay, yeah. I think we have time to do one oh, last one. What is one thing on the very top of your bucket list? My buck, I, wanna, I have not been to Israel yet. Ooh. I wanna go to Israel and then I also wanna go to Africa. Two okay. things I wanna do. Yes, yeah. um, bucket list. I, I'm probably exploring the world with my kids. I'd like to there do you that. Go. You know, I've done a lot of traveling, um, foreign countries and all that, but maybe for them and my husband to have the experience together, I think that'd be really cool. That's, awesome. That's my bucket list. That's good. Listen, That's good. we don't know what's on your bucket list, but like <laughs> Amy said, write it down, make it plain. He's going to draw you into green pastures. Wherever he is, is goodness. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.